Hello again. So last time we sent usage events to metronome, but raw events are not bills. Today we'll be creating billable metrics, which are the queries that transform those events into quantities you can actually charge for. This is where Nova's pricing model is going to really start coming to life. Let's jump right in. Again, here's the big picture of how metronome works. We've sent raw usage events, that's done. Today, we're creating billable metrics that aggregate those events. So what exactly are billable metrics? They are customizable queries that filter and aggregate your event stream. They transform your raw events into the actual quantities that show up on your invoices. And they come in two types. Streaming metrics for simple real-time counts and sums, like the number of images generated, and SQL metrics for more complex calculations, such as computing the average daily maximum storage per user across regions. So they let you count, sum, or otherwise track usage in whatever way fits your business model. You can also group by properties in your event to enable tier-based or feature-based pricing. So these metrics are the foundation of your pricing model because they determine what you can actually charge for. All right, just a quick reminder here on Nova, our AI company. It supports image generation in three tiers, standard, high-res, and ultra, with their respective prices. So now let's design our billable metric for Nova. Our logic here is simple, so it's going to be a streaming metric. The event type is image generation, which is what Nova sends. Each Nova event includes how many images were generated, so we'll sum on that property for our aggregation. We also use the image type as the group key, which allows us to track and price each tier separately using the same metric. This is much cleaner than creating three separate metrics. Here we are in VS Code again, and we'll be creating our billable metrics. These are also straightforward to manage in the metronome app, but we're sticking to our code first approach for this series. We will take a look at the completed billable metric in the UI at the end. So our repo is unchanged from episode three. We're not adding any new files here. We are adding a couple of new constants to our config file. First, the billable metric name, which we are setting to Nova image generation, and then a constant for the group key, which is image type. Let's look at our updated metronome client now. So the ingestion code that we wrote in episode three is unchanged, but we're adding a new method to create the billable metric. And here it is. This method accepts a few parameters. First, the billable metric name, and then the event type, which is just our ingestion event. Next is the aggregation type, and we're using sum for this demo. And then the aggregation key, which is the number of images in our case, and that is the property we're summing on. The group key, once again, is image underscore type, and that's what we'll use for dimensional pricing. And finally, a couple of filters. We're requiring the image type and the number of images fields to exist in the events that we ingest. Otherwise, we would not know how to price for them. So those are the parameters that this method accepts. And down here, we're going to create a dictionary with all of these parameters, and we'll do a check on the aggregation key and the property filters before adding them to our dictionary. Finally, we invoke the metronome SDK again, just like we did with ingestion. So this time around, we're calling the billable metric create endpoint and passing in our params dictionary. Here, we're normalizing the SDK response and returning it as a dictionary as well. To use this create billable metric method that we just created, we'll take a similar approach as we did in episode three. So we'll add an HTTP route to our Flask server. To do that, let's switch to our app.py file then. So we're going to add a new route to our Flask server here. And when we post to it, it'll call the metronome client to create our billable metrics. So let's take a look at that new route. We're calling this new route API metrics, and it's fairly straightforward, really. What we're doing here is calling the create billable metric method that we just added to our metronome client and hard coding all the fields we've been talking about for our billable metric. So that's Nova image generation for the billable metric, image generation for the event type. Once again, our aggregation type is sum, and we're aggregating on the number of images. We just have the one group key, which is image type, but the metronome SDK expects a list of lists for the group keys. So we're doing a bit of formatting here. 
And then for the filters, we want to make sure that the image type and the number of images exist. And once we run this, the response will give us the billable metric name and the ID which comes from the metronome SDK. So let's try running it now. Once again, I'm going to start a terminal. Let's uh, split it. And I'll add a third window actually. All right, let's make more room over here. We're ready to create our billable metrics. And of course, the first thing we need to do is make sure our server is running. So I'll kick it off. Next, let's create our billable metric. So I'm just going to copy this curl command and let's run it. It looks like that worked. The metronome SDK gave us an ID and our metric name is exactly what we configured earlier. And next, we'll ingest a new event for our demo customer, Jane. So to do that, I'm going to run this new kernel command. And if you notice, I'm using a new transaction ID here. And of course, that's to prevent event duplicates as we saw in episode three. So if you remember, the transaction ID field is idempotent. So after a first successful run, any events with the same transaction ID will get ignored for 34 days by metronome. Okay, so let's run this. And there we go, our event has been generated. So let's do a quick recap now. What we've done is add a new method to our metronome client to create billable metrics. And to test it, we created a new route in our Flask server. Let's switch over to the metronome app now to take a look. So the first thing we'll do here is check out our billable metric. So we'll go to offering billable metrics and we see our Nova image generation metric here, which is great news. So let's look at the details. This looks like it matches exactly what we created. So the event type is image generation. We require image type and number of images to exist. We're doing a sum aggregation on the number of images and our group key is the image type, which we'll use for dimensional pricing later. So our billable metric creation through the SDK was successful. Let's also check out the event that we sent. So go to events and here it is. That's the transaction ID we use. Let's see the details. And this confirms that not only was our event ingested, but it also matched the billable metric that we just created, which is great news. If you recall in episode three, our event was ingested, but did not match a billable metric because we hadn't created those yet. Now it is functional and ready to be used by the rest of our billing flow. And just like that, we've configured a billable metric that transforms Nova's usage events into measurable quantities. Next up, we'll define products and rate cards where we decide how to translate those quantities into revenue. As always, the GitHub repo and docs are linked in the description. I'll see you next time.